welcome back to episode two of Mets Perspective. I'm Jacob Resnick. He's Joe DeMeo. And Joe, it's obviously been a great start for the Mets at the Major League level. Some mixed results down on the farm. It's actually the guys down in Port St. Lucie with the best record so far. And I think that's actually going to be the theme of our Stockwatch segment. So, Joe, why don't you kick us off with someone who's been catching your eye recently? I'm going to go with 19-year-old outfielder Alex Ramirez, who the Mets actually had repeat low A Port St. Lucie, where he paid last year. Had some inconsistent results last year, which kind of expected for a player of his age and kind of raw ability. But the Mets being smart, putting him back there, sure looks like uh, that's paying off. He's hitting around 330. You're seeing high exit velocities. He's playing center field at the level that you know scouts project that he can really handle that position for the long term uh, i imagine it's probably not going to be too too long until you see him move up to high a brooklyn but i think the mets decision to have him repeat st lucy is proving to be the smart one yeah he kind of reminds me at this point of his career like ronnie mauricio kind of in terms of their frame and athleticism it's kind of the guy that you can envision in a couple of years adding a lot more muscle and really just being a force at the plate and, and still maintaining that athleticism in the outfield. So Ramirez has certainly been fun to watch. I'm going to go with someone on the pitching side of that Port St. Lucie team, and that's Calvin Ziegler. He was the Mets' second round pick last year and the, the highest signed pick from the Mets draft class. And like Ramirez, Ziegler just 19 years old and through four starts, he's been absolutely excellent. ERA around three and a 46% strikeout rate. He's striking out the world down there. Fastball touching as high as 97 miles an hour. It's sitting more in that 93, 94 range, but he is able to get that velo up there to the higher 90s. A hammer curve that's getting a ton of whiffs and uh, really been impressed to see at the young age. And Ziegler, there are a ton of pitchers down there in Port St. Lucie to watch, and, and Ziegler is certainly the best of them. All right, let's get to a new segment we'll call Prospective Retrospective, where we look back at some of the prospects we've highlighted in the past who are now doing bigger and better things in the major leagues. And one of those is Tyler McGill. If the opportunity ever presents itself, I'm going to be ready to go. And it's just been that trusting my stuff and having confidence is the biggest thing. We know the story, filling in for Jacob deGrom as the opening day starter and then participating in the Mets combined no-hitter recently. So, Joe, let's talk about Tyler, kind of where he was when we spoke to him last year in AAA and how he's progressed now to be stalwart in the Mets major league rotation. Jacob, you and I do this stuff all the time where we're talking about prospects, which means we're bound to be wrong very often. <laughs> uh, in the case of Tyler McGill, we were wrong in a positive light. It's a guy that this time last year, you and I were talking about him as a potential relief option. Maybe a guy that could do multi innings. I remember even us talking about him in the same light as a Seth Lugo. And boy, he, he gets the call up last year with starting pitching need and he showed like he was ready to be a starter. I mean, when I watched him pitch in the minor leagues, he was throwing two pitches. He was fastball slider. Then all of a sudden, he's throwing a changeup. He's throwing a curveball. I'm like, I didn't even know he had these pitches. And now you go to here in, in 2022, and to me, it just looks like just further maturation from him. He is a bulldog out there. You're seeing life on the fastball up to 99 miles an hour at times now. Then obviously the slider's getting a lot of swings and misses, and he's keeping guys off balance with that changeup. So for me, I think Tyler McGill is one of those guys that you and I may have missed on, but missed in a good way. Now, Joe, obviously most of the pitching prospects right now in the organization are concentrated at the lower levels of the minor leagues. But if there's one person and kind of in the upper levels who you would be targeting as someone who could make that McGill type jump to, to help the major league team if the need arises, who would you be looking at? For me, it would be my number 10 ranked prospect, Jose Buteau, who's currently in AA Binghamton. I went and watched him pitch at opening day for Binghamton, and I saw a fastball that sat 92 to 94. He hit 95 twice on the stadium gun. But what stood out to me the most was his changeup, which is the best changeup, I think, in the entire organization. He has his third pitch, a curveball, which is what really needs some work. He needs to continue to throw it. If he's able to get that curve to that level of being a solid third pitch, he could definitely make the major leagues and, you know, help out at the back end of the rotation if there were some injuries or underperformance that, you know, required it. Now, Joe, we've talked about some of the interesting storylines early on in the Mets system, but we know who fans want to hear from. It's Francisco Alvarez, the clear-cut number one prospect in the organization. Alvarez had a fantastic season last year in Brooklyn, now up to double-A with Binghamton. 
off to a solid start so far. And we recently sat down with Francisco to talk about his quest to the major leagues. Francisco, it always seems like the camera catches you smiling on the, on the field. How important is it for you to have fun and, and where does your love of baseball come from? It all started when uh, watching my, my brother play when I was uh, two years old. And my mom always told me that you're going to be playing baseball too. Uh, and I love the, the, that competition and playing against another team and just trying to find a way to beat them. And I, lo I love that. Just, that's how uh, I like I'm so passionate about baseball. He hits a rocket out to left field, and that ball is way out of here. Off the scoreboard. Well, there's the power we were talking about. You mentioned in spring training that your desire was to make the major leagues this season. Do you still believe that's an attainable goal? That's my first year here, yeah. I'm going to make it this year. Your teammates with Brett Beatty and Ronnie Mauricio, two top prospects in the system. What is your relationship like with those guys? It's a really good relationship. Uh, one of the best things that ever happened to me, just be a part of uh, uh, the same team with them. Uh, with Beatty, and they stay in the same complex, and so they're just always joking around. Just Beatty go to his room, and then uh, Alvi go to uh, Beatty's room. So I just always just making it around, uh, having fun and. Beatty always told me that whenever he's struggling, that just take it easy, take it easy, you're going to be fine. Obviously, you know, your dream to make it to the major leagues, but what are some of your other goals that you would like to attain in, in your career? One of the, my main one is uh, win a lot of World Series, five or six. Uh, that's, that's after making it to the big, I just win a lot, a lot of World Series. Now, Joe, he's obviously looking to make major leagues this season, which I think we've agreed is a little ambitious. Obviously, good to see him uh, have very lofty expectations for himself. But where is he at in his development right now? Obviously, we know the hitting side, but especially on the defensive end. Yeah, like you said, we know what the bat with Francisco Alvarez is. It's a 70 grade power. He has good pitch recognition skills, and he just consistently hits the ball as hard as anyone in the organization. And arguably as hard as anyone in all of minor league baseball. But where the work really is needed is on the defensive side of the ball. And for me, he's got the throwing arm. I don't think that's a major issue for him. I look at the receiving. He needs to work on pitch framing. He needs to work on blocking balls in the dirt. And I don't think that's a negative when we're talking about it. I think he's a guy that is 20 years old at the double A level. He just needs seasoning behind the plate and I think he's going to get there you know he may not win gold gloves one day behind the plate but I don't think by any means it's a guy that's not going to be able to stick at catcher long term yeah certainly obviously we know the power I think there's an, an element of, of patience that that needs to come in his game he, he's certainly swings out of his shoes a lot and is, is kind of full throttle all the time which definitely works to his benefit more than it works to his detriment because we've seen just how uh you know fantastic his numbers have been over his entire career but you know looking into next season he's be 21 it's not out of the picture there are certainly top prospects who have come up uh and other teams at that age and uh, and made an impact and i think if there's anyone in this system that could do it it'll be alvarez we heard francisco talk about his goals of making the major leagues this season so what would it take for the mets to make that move and call him up at just 20 years old i appreciate his ambition i mean that's uh, obviously a great goal to have I don't see a very realistic way it happens. I mean, I guess if you had injuries to both James McCann and Tomas Nito, then you might take a shot, bring Alvarez up and pair him up with Patrick Mazika, who's already on the 40 man roster. But I can't see a way where if one of McCann or Nito are healthy, that the Mets would push Alvarez to the point where he, he would probably be a little overmatched at the major league level. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you there, Joe. Obviously, we've seen before the Mets have made that move with someone like Michael Conforto back in 2015. That was more of a need with the offense struggling. I don't think this Mets team is going to be two-star for offense uh, where you're going to need to bring up someone like Alvarez. But you're right. If there are injuries, perhaps they make a move. But uh, I think at his young age, the most important thing is to focus on his development, focus on the little things like uh, his play behind the plate, his his arm accuracy, his framing, all of those things you mentioned. 
and uh, and not rush him and potentially stunt his uh, his growth in that sense. All right, that'll do it for us this week. He's Joe DeMeo. I'm Jacob Resnick. We'll see you next time on Mess Perspective. See the Mets of tomorrow play today. The Brooklyn Cyclones play baseball on the beach all summer long. Visit brooklyncyclones.com slash tickets.